Hey guys, my name is Mark, and in this video I want to quickly break down what the numbers and markings on the majority of vintage lenses actually mean. Shh. Your lens is trying to tell you something. So one of the first things you'll notice when you look at a vintage SLR lens is all the markings and numbers that are either painted on, or in most cases, engraved onto the lens itself. Now I personally love the physical aesthetic these bring to a lens, but these numbers and markings actually mean something. And once you understand that, they can really help you with your photography and videography. Today my model lens will be this Contax Carl Zeiss 50mm Planar f1.4. You can't miss the name because it's right here on the front of the lens. Next to that we have the maximum aperture which is represented by the number 1.4. And next to that number is a 50 which is the focal length of the lens. So just by looking at the front of the lens, we know that it's a 50mm focal length with a maximum aperture of f1.4. Pretty straightforward. This is a Zeiss lens, and as such, the T Asterix brand is on display right here. The T stands for transparent, and it's really just an indicator that the lens has a multi-coating to reduce flare and improve contrast. Interesting little fact here, it was introduced in 1972 to no real fanfare. But Zeiss started marketing the T Asterix in 1974 as a reaction to Pentax's super multi-coated Takamar lens ads. Marketing is fantastic. Next up is the serial number, which doesn't really help your photography in any direct way, but you can use it as a reference to help track down how old your lens actually is, which is kind of cool. Moving along to the barrel of the lens, you've got the focus ring. Now on the focus ring, you'll see some numbers here, which are distance measurements. And the distance markings indicate the distance from the lens to the object in focus. Now on this particular lens, the focus distance scale is measured in both meters, colored in white, and feet, colored in orange. If we turn down from our maximum to minimum focus here, we reach 0.45 meters, which on this lens is the minimum focusing distance. That's as close as we can get to a subject and still be in focus. Now on the other side of the focus ring, you'll see this infinity symbol which represents your furthest focusing distance. And a big part about what I love about vintage lenses is having those hard stops, both at the minimum and maximum focusing points. These plus the distance markers really come in handy when shooting video and you need to rack focus in your shot. You can do this by eye, but in films, they'll actually measure out the distances between the two focus points and the focus puller will be able to track when the camera is rolling. It gets really fun when your subject is moving through the frame. Hit your marks, people. Hit your marks. Now the aperture ring controls how much light is permitted into your camera, and is a scale represented on the lens by f-stop numbers. The maximum aperture being the widest the lens opens, all the way through to the minimum aperture, which is the smallest the aperture closes. This next scale is one of my favorites. In between the focusing ring and the aperture ring is your hyperfocal distance scale. The reason it's one of my favorites is because it can tell you at a glance which parts of your image will be an acceptable focus based on your aperture setting. It may look a little intimidating, but let me break it down. Say I'm looking to shoot at an f8 for a particular image and my subject is four feet away. To figure out how much of your image will be in focus, you find the corresponding f-stop in the hyperfocal distance scale, which have these little lines above them. Simply carry those lines up into the focusing ring, and you'll get a rough idea of the hyperfocal distance of your shot at that aperture setting. You can see in this case, it's about 3.5 feet to 5 feet. 
When you close down the aperture to say f16, the hyperfocal distance will increase between three feet to six feet. So even before taking an actual photo, you know the hyperfocal distance of that particular lens at a specific setting. So your lens is trying to tell you something. And hopefully now, you can start to understand what it's trying to say. And the more you use these little aids on your lenses, the more you start to develop an eye for it. And once that seeps into your creative subconscious, it becomes part of the creative process when thinking about compositions. Just another way using these old lenses can help you develop an eye for visual storytelling. All right guys, well that's it for me. Any questions, leave them down below. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you next time. For my super multi-coated Tacomar 20 millimeter F4.5 lens review, I'll take it. 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 I'll take